Hey everyone, this is Connor Mead with the Calculation Center with another video on our linear algebra series. This episode will be about basis vectors and what how can we identify whether a collection of vectors is indeed a basis for a particular vector space. Now this is a topic that a lot of students have trouble with when they're going through it the first time, so let's hopefully see if we can clarify some of the confusion and uh, make sure we understand how to actually check these kinds of things. Okay, so the first thing I've written up here is the standard definition of a basis for a vector space. Um, we say that if we have vectors v1, v2 up to vn, we say that they are a basis of a vector space v if the two following conditions hold, and they both have to hold. If one of them fails, then this collection is not a basis. Okay. First of all, what I've labeled A here is that v1, v2 up to vn are linearly independent, and b, the span of v1 up to v2 up to vn, is equal to v. Okay, now hopefully uh, these two topics themselves can be quite complicated, but we release videos on both of these. So if you have any issues with these, uh, be sure to check out our videos and come back to this one once you are more comfortable with them. Um, now, in practice, it's quite easy to check if some vectors are linearly independent. And while it's also quite easy to check the span, um, technically speaking, practically speaking, it can get a bit messy sometimes. So I'm going to talk about uh, what I would say is an easier way of doing this. Um, and that's to make the observation that if v1, v2, dot, 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 vn are in our vector space v, and the dimension of v is equal to n, that is the number of little vector v's we have, the number of vectors in our collection, if that's equal to the dimension of our vector space, then v1 to vn being linearly independent implies that the span of v1 to up to vn is equal to v. Okay? So that means that if these two conditions up here are met, then this condition uh, implies this condition. So therefore, we could instead check that this first condition, A, that where all our vectors are inside our vector space is true. The dimension of V is equal to N. That could be a second condition. And then we could just check that um, the vectors are linearly independent, and then we'll automatically have the span. So instead of checking these two conditions up here, A and B, we could instead check conditions A prime, B prime, and C prime. Okay? And these three conditions are actually quite easy to check. Um, so, for example, is 1, 2, minus 1, 3, 2, 2, and 5, 2, 1 a basis for R3? Uh, so V1 is 1, 2, minus 1, V2 is this vector, and V3 is this vector, and our vector space is R3. Um, well, let's look at these conditions. Now, I've written down here that B prime and C prime are both true immediately. And why is that? Well, V1, V2, and V3 are all R three-dimensional vectors, and therefore, by definition, live inside R3. So B is definitely true immediately. Uh, these three vectors are inside the vector space we're interested in. Um, C prime is true because the dimension of V is equal to N. Well, R3 clearly has three dimensions, and we have three vectors here. So therefore, in our case, N is equal to three, and the dimension of R3 is indeed three. So B prime and C prime are definitely true. So we only need to check A prime. We've already talked about how to check if a bunch of vectors are linearly independent. We just set up this equation. We set up the matrix, which has columns, the three vectors we're interested in, 1, 2, minus 1, 3, 2, 2, and 5, 2, 1. Apply it to the vector a1, a2, a3, and set it equal to 0. And see, we want to see that our only solutions are uh, a1 is equal to a2 is equal to a3 is equal to 0. And that will tell us that our vectors are linearly independent. Now, I've already gone through the augmented matrix equation. I'll just flash it here briefly here, so you can go along with it if you want. But note that it does clearly imply that a1, a2, and a3 are equal to 0. So just to complete the argument, this implies um, v1, v2, and v3 are linearly independent, which implies the condition c prime is, oh, I actually believe we call this a prime, actually. a prime is true, uh, which implies v1, v2, and V3 is a basis. Now, to be clear, if you're going to give this answer in an exam or an assignment or something, I would recommend being very explicit um, in this uh, property. That if you, I'd recommend writing this down somewhere essentially on your answer, is that if V1 to Vn are in V and the dimension of V is equal to N, then linear independence implies that the span of these vectors is equal to V. Because this is uh, something that does need to be stated, 
this definition here is not the standard definition of things you need to check for something to be a basis. So I would definitely recommend making this argument on any answers you give. But once you do, these three conditions are quite easy to check, as we've just seen. Okay? Now let's hop over here and talk about a little more of a difficult problem. So suppose P is equal to the set of x, y, z, w's in R4, such that the fourth coordinate w is equal to 2x plus y minus z. Now I'm giving you three new vectors in four dimensions, and I'm asking if they're a basis for P. Well, first of all, we want to check if v1, v2, and v3 are in P. Remember, that was condition V prime. Now, last time that was obvious, but this time it's a little less obvious. We have to check it. Um, now, to check if, say, for example, v1 is in the set, we just need to see whether it matches the definition that like, vectors have to meet to be in the set. So this says that the fourth coordinate, w, is equal to two times the first, co first coordinate plus the second coordinate minus the third coordinate. So what do we get here? So two times the first is two plus y to less than one is three minus one is two. So v1 is definitely in the set. Um, v2 minus two plus zero minus three, that gives us minus five. Uh, minus two plus one is minus one, minus seven is indeed minus eight. So V3 is also in the set. So yes, we do confirm V1, V2, and V3 are inside P. The second question is, we want to say, does P have the same dimension as the number of vectors we have? So last time it was pretty obvious what the dimension is. And, you know, if you're comfortable with thinking about these kind of things and done it a lot, you might be able to already say what dimension this set will be. But let's assume you're not. Um, well, if we have a vector in P, and this is the general strategy I would recommend for you. You want to take an arbitrary element of your set, P, okay? So in our case, we're going to take V. And V has to be of this form, x, y, z, 2x plus y minus z. That's because it's fourth coordinate. The rule for being in P, which is written out here, says that its fourth coordinate must be given by this formula, okay? Then, by using uh, our knowledge of vector addition and scaling, we can rewrite this vector, x, y, z, 2x plus y minus z, um, as the sum of three different vectors, x times 1, 0, 0, 2, y times 0, 1, 0, 1, and z times 0, 0, 1, minus 1. Now, there's a little more arguing you might have to do, depending on the level of your course, but basically these three vectors are clearly linearly independent, because and this is the only vector with uh, any non-zero entry in the first coordinate, this is the only vector with any non-zero entry in the third coordinate, and this is the only vector with a non-zero entry in the third coordinate. Now, that's just the explanation as to why this is true, so you might not need to dwell on that too much, but it might be satisfying to know. Um, but basically, from here, since we can write any element inside V, or inside P, with uh, three different constant vectors scaled up by some number, then we say the dimension of P is equal to three. So to work out the dimension of a subspace, you just take an arbitrary element and see how many kind of uh, vectors you get when you split it up into co to scaled copies of constant vectors, okay? So like we split up this uh, vector here into three different constant vectors multiplied by some variables, and that gives us the dimension of P, which is three. So since dimension of P is equal to three, it is indeed true that um, the C prime, the condition C prime is indeed true, okay? And similarly, last time we just need to check that these three vectors are linearly independent. So what do we do again? We just set up the augmented matrix equation, which has as columns the first vector to the second vector and the third vector. And we'll see that when we go through it, it immediately reduces to uh, 1 minus 1 minus 1, 1, 2, 4, 8, and minus 3, minus 6. So these last three rows are all multiples of each other, so they reduce immediately to this. And this clearly comes down to a singular matrix. Um, so we get non-zero solutions, because we have solutions for any number A3. So we choose a number A3, and then this formula tells us how to get A1 and A2, such to uh, get a family of solutions. So since these vectors are not linearly independent, overall it's not a basis, because it's failed the uh, first condition, that they can't be linearly dependent. Okay, so hopefully that made sense to everyone. Um, this is Connor Mead with the Calculation Center, and I'll see you guys next time.